Laura, I've got a problem. But I need you to keep this in confidence. Sure. Uh, a couple years ago, I started working for the Nissan Oil Company. Great clients. I mean, I really like the CEO, Jim Nissan. You know him. <laughs> Not your warm and cuddly type. No, but a real straight shooter. I mean, I really like working for him. So what's the problem? Well, a couple of days ago... We had it in the pipeline, and poof, it was gone. 10,000 gallons of heating oil. Whoa. Yeah. We couldn't figure it out, so we started to do pressure tests on the pipeline, and then we found it. One of the pipes had corroded and leaked it into the ground. You didn't see it on the surface? Not with a deep water table. So what happened? Well, we fixed the pipe, and we found the oil sitting in a vertical plume, slowly diffusing into a deep aquifer. There was no surface or groundwater pollution off the plant property, so we decided to do nothing. The oil's still there? I doubt it. It's had 30 years of abuse. The last samples we took from the observation wells about 10 years ago were clean. The state never required remedial action. The state never knew about it. required to report all spills regardless of when they occurred? Now, yeah, but not then. It seems to me the law is pretty clear on that, regardless of when the spill occurred. Look, Pete, I told you that in confidence. If the state gets involved, nothing good's gonna come of it. The only thing that's gonna happen is an expensive dog and pony show. But what about... Let me be frank here. I can't have a consulting engineer that doesn't value client loyalty, all right? Think about it. Well, you're right about the law. If you know about it, you've got to report it. Great. But what's the right thing to do? I mean, wouldn't it be better to just forget the whole thing? All I know is, as far as I'm concerned, this conversation never happened. Cash flow problems getting worse at the firm. Layoffs. I'm the junior engineer. If this keeps up, I'll be the first to be cut loose. Maybe we shouldn't have come here. We knew this could happen. We... Look, your job's perfect for you. I can be an engineer anywhere. All the firm needs is one large contract to weather the cash flow problem. I'm working on this proposal right now to the city. If it comes through, we'll all be fine. What if it doesn't? has to. What's the project? Construction of sewers on the south side of town, in the poor neighborhoods. Yeah. The sewers need it pretty badly. I'll submit my proposal to the city as soon as I clear it with the boss. This is good work, Jason. Very complete. And well presented. There's uh, just one problem. The cost needs to be cut by one third. I can't do it. I've already cut as much as possible. I've used every trick in the book. This is an accurate estimate for what it'll cost to do the design. We can't do the work for any less. Listen, here's the deal. The mayor is in the last stages of his reelection campaign. His opponent is against building these sewers. If she wins, there will be no sewerage system. But if the mayor is elected... I don't understand. I've arranged for a large contribution to land in the mayor's campaign fund. In exchange, our proposal to do the design work will be accepted. No questions, no problems. And as always, there will be cost overruns. So, cutting the budget on paper is just smoke and mirrors. And our fees? Paid in full. 
Listen, it's not as sleazy as you think. The mayor is a smart politician with a big picture view. He wants what we want. So, all we have to do is lie. Underestimate. But I'll know it's a lie. This is how the game is played. Jason, this has to be done. If you refuse to change the proposal, I'll do it myself. Then we'll have to deal with the messy issue of your tenure at the firm. We understand each other? Lauren speaks very highly of you. We were roommates in undergraduate school. <laughs> she said you're a whiz at computer modeling of environmental systems. Mm, that's what my dissertation was on. So, would you like to work part-time for a few months before you begin your academic work? That would be perfect. Well, Lauren has been working on a stream model for the Snake River, and she's gotten most of her dissolved oxygen and other stream data, and she's just beginning the modeling process, and I'm sure she could use a little help. Sounds great. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Thank you. There will be a few forms you'll have to fill out. This is well done. You've taken a lot of uh, DO and BOD measurements. Float down the river, occasionally drop the DO probe in the water, grabbing a sample. It's not a bad summer job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Did you find any other significant point sources? None that we could find. The usual non-point stuff, of course. Otherwise, it would be a no-brainer. How about your reoxygenation calculations? <laughs> you calculated them, right? No. Well, how were you going to find your reoxygenation constants? I don't, I don't understand. How are you going to model the river without those constants? With, with the data we have. <laughs> Not unless you have the velocity, depth, and other parameters. So everything we've done is worthless without that data? What are we going to do? I have to tell Cashman. Hold it. Let's just think about this. Oh, the client's going to be very pleased. Thanks for helping me out. It was a good experience. Well, thank you, and good luck to you at Bucknell. Huh? <sighs> yes, it's a great opportunity. You know, you're perfect for that job. I've always thought that teaching is more than just transferring knowledge, and you're going to be a great role model for the students. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I am out of here. <laughs> How did you get the reoxygenation constants? Pretty much made them up. There were tables in some old textbooks for the constants based on river type, so I did the best I could to match the type to the snake, and then I just plugged them into the data. Did you say that's how you got them? Not exactly. Careful wording is everything. The client will never know. No one will ever know. <laughs> we will. We will. What was your role in this project, Mr. Schmidt? I was the engineer in charge of foundation design. Can you tell us exactly what happened at the construction site? Uh, the footing shifted at one corner of the building, and the half-constructed building collapsed. This was the foundation you designed? 
Yeah, but the accident wasn't my fault. The design was correct. But the contractor brought in the wrong soil. And this is why the foundation failed. You found this out after the accident? Oh, no, I suspected it was the wrong soil from the texture and color. And it was delivered to the site. You knew it was the wrong soil while it was being brought in? Yes. And who did you tell about your suspicions? No one. I was the design engineer. The quality control engineer should have discovered the problem. It wasn't my responsibility. As a result, the building collapsed. Three people died. What does the engineering code of ethics state about cases like this? I don't know. I have never seen an American engineering code of ethics. Well then, I'll read you the first fundamental canon of the code. The engineer shall always hold paramount the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Have you ever read these words, Mr. Schmidt? No, madam. And because of your ignorance and denial of duty, three people died in an accident at that site. No more questions. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, how long have you been an engineer? 35 years. I graduated from the University of Leipzig in 1962. And uh, what kind of work did you do in East Germany? I was employed by the State Construction Agency. Any jobs you thought were particularly challenging? The headquarters of the Stasi, the East German secret police. Why so difficult? Everything was specified by the Stasi. We complied with their requirements. We constructed cells in the basement. We saw the installation of instruments of, of torture. Everybody knew what would happen in that building. Didn't that bother you? Yes, but if I had objected, my family would have been the first to occupy those cells. So you kept quiet? I did my job. I told no one, not even my wife. <clears throat> and um, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, you came to the United States? My whole family did. I found a job as a foundation engineer. Uh, you've been successful in your new career. I do my job. How do you feel about this accident? Very sad. But it was not my fault. I was doing my job as assigned. That is what I have always been taught, and that is what I still believe. 